part of the magic of beeswax is that an insect, the honeybee, captures the energy of the sun on a bright sunny summer day, converts that to honey and then to beeswax, and when we light those candles, we release that light, that energy, back into the cosmos. And we've been a part of it. Hello and welcome to Notes from the Bee Yard. You're listening to Episode 16, The Niwot Light Company. Elaboration is an old-fashioned word beekeepers have used to describe a conversion process, honey to beeswax, that happens within the body of a honeybee. I love this word because it distills a complex metabolic action into something simple and poetic. Today's episode is about beeswax and feeling thankful. My name is Laura Tyler. I'm your producer and host. This is episode 16, The Niwot Light Company, written by Tom Theobald in 1990 and read by Tom in 2021. The leaves are in the old oak table. The table is set with fine linen, crystal, and china. Stews and soups bubble in cast iron pots on the wood stove as the fire crackles quietly and a soft warmth flows through the house, causing tantalizing aromas to waft about. Outside, snow swirls through darkened trees, and the green grass and brightly colored flowers of summer are but a dim memory in the depth of a Colorado winter. Soon fragrances materialize in overflowing dishes, bowls, and platters, as good friends settle in around the table. The wine is poured, the candles lit. Paradise on a plate from Barbara's Magic Kitchen is how my cousin David describes it, and Barbara does indeed set a fine table, hearty, middle American fare, beautifully prepared. I marvel at her skill as another feast appears. These times are more than simply meals, more a vignette, a snapshot of the fabric of our lives. The table plates and glasses all have tales to tell of other evenings such as this, of enduring friendship, a view of life, of special feet beneath the table. Much of the food is the product of our garden, the ham perhaps from one of our pigs, the wine likely a gift from Gary in California, all personal connections. The candles are my small contribution. Traditionally, many old-time beekeepers reserve the first cold days of early winter for candle making, using the beeswax produced as a result of their honey harvest the capping's wax. Few do so today because of the time involved. Most of the wax produced each year is simply shipped off to wholesalers. The demand for beeswax is high, since it has a number of unique qualities which can't be duplicated by petroleum-based waxes. Beeswax finds its way into polishes, waterproofing, dental and sculptural modeling, cosmetics, religious candles, and into many other uses. Once I was even contacted by a sprinkler company looking for beeswax. I was puzzled at first, but soon learned that it was used to plug the heads of indoor sprinklers. With a melting point of 143 degrees, it would melt and release water in the event of a fire. As long ago as 5,000 years, beeswax was an important commodity in international trade. It was used for modeling and embalming, for seals, and the wax writing tablets on which man recorded his experience in daily commerce 
for thousands of years. Throughout history, though, the greatest demand was for making high-quality candles. Beeswax candles were far superior to the common oil lamps or to tallow candles with their smoke and unpleasant odor. Even today, beeswax is the premier wax for candle making. For our ancestors, beeswax candles were the state of the art in lighting technology. During the Middle Ages in Europe, guilds arose essentially trade unions, which frequently exercised dictatorial control over various trades and crafts. One of these, the Tallow Chandler's Company, controlled the production of tallow candles. The Worshipful Company of Wax Chandlers, established in 1199, was another, and this guild controlled the manufacture of beeswax candles in the vicinity of London. It was a powerful organization with wide-ranging influence, since beeswax candles were the quality light of the time. The wax chandlers held a virtual monopoly and controlled this form of artificial light much as a public utility operates today. Independent of practical uses, beeswax is a beautiful substance with an intriguing origin. In color, fine new cappings wax varies from a bright lemon yellow to the deeper yellow orange found in the yolk of a farm fresh egg. The surface of new wax has a vitreous sheen that, like fine walnut, invites a touch, a stroke. Over time, the surface ages to a delicate dustiness called the bloom. In origin, beeswax is the final expression of nectar gathered by the bees. It is produced only by the young bees during the first two or three weeks of their life. To do so, they consume large quantities of honey. It has been estimated that it takes seven pounds of honey to produce one pound of wax. Within their bodies, the honey is converted metabolically, and small, nearly white flakes of wax are extruded from between their abdominal segments. These same young bees are the ones which convert the incoming nectar to honey, a process called elaboration. Thus, Beeswax is a further elaboration of honey. The bees use their wax for comb building, and it is molded by many thousands of little feet and mouths into a marvel of geometry, the honeycomb. It is also used to cap each cell in which honey has been stored. The caps are cut off at harvest time each year, so the honey can be extracted and it is this new cappings wax which I use for candle making. Obviously, we are many generations removed from our dependence on candles for lighting, but beeswax candles, particularly hand-dipped dinner tapers, remain the most exquisite use for fine new cappings wax. So, as snow driven by a chill wind buffets the house, Friends gather round the table. Steam rises from the dishes, condensing on icy windows, and the delicate fragrance of beeswax adds a note to the harmony in the air. The candles flicker softly in a draft of friendly conversation as I ponder over the origin of their gentle light. The energy of a summer sun is captured by the many flowers, then gathered by the bees as they forage in farm and field. In their subtle way, the candles reflect another time when all our lives were less complicated, our ties to the earth, like the bees, more direct. As a special gift of nature, 
They provide not only light for the eye, but warmth for the spirit. While the snow flies outside, the candles remind us of all those small connections which enrich and bind our lives. And I think to myself that perhaps my contribution to the feast is not so insignificant after all. Before we started recording, you mentioned to me that you thought this one might be hard to do. Do you want to say a little more about that? Well, Barbara was a, a an excellent cook. Uh, she produced beautiful meals. And I can recall times when we would sit down to a meal, just as I had described, and it was particularly hard because I, I used a comment that had been made by my cousin David. David and I were the same age. He was a year older than me, and we became very close later in life. And he died at age 60. So he's been gone for quite a few years. And his comment memorialized in this article reminds me of David and it, and that makes it a little difficult mm -hmm. the piece that hit me is just this last line I think to myself that perhaps my contribution to the feast is not so insignificant after all I, I just think that's a beautiful thought about life in general not just the feast but uh -huh. You know, if we can all live um, and have that feeling. It's often the little things in life that are most important that we should pay mm -hmm. attention to, that we should cherish, that we should not let pass by without note. When you were writing this... 30-ish years ago, did you have an awareness of the greater resonance of that line, or were you really thinking about it just as the feast? I don't know. I think there's a strong element of romance in my personality. I think uh, lines like that are a way to express that sense. What do you mean? Well, I the candles may mean much more to me because I understand the history and the origin and I'm involved in the creation of the beeswax. But uh, contributing that to a feast is not insignificant. It certainly is not insignificant to me. It may go by without notice by other people, but it's part of the romance of my life to be able to create something like that of such exquisite beauty. Mm -hmm. Switching gears a little bit, there's a piece of this that made me chuckle. You're talking about uh, one time you were contacted by a sprinkler company looking for beeswax for the sprinkler heads. Yes. And this is another thing about beekeeping that I didn't expect that's kind of cool are just these weird requests that you get for beeswax from people uh -huh. who also appreciate it and all these different ways it's being used. Yes. Yeah, tell me about that. Well, before I got into candle dipping and used all of my wax... For the candles, I sold uh, fairly large quantities to an outfit here in Boulder that used it to manufacture furniture polish. I would never give up any of my wax that way for now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why would you not? Oh, because I think that candles are a much more exquisite expression of the beeswax. 
Beeswax has a lot of very practical uses, and I think the highest use is beeswax candles. And the highest of those uses are hand-dipped candles. Yeah. Nobody does that anymore. Nobody wants to take to take the time. And uh, it's really an, an intimate connection with a world you don't even know. And I often think to myself when I'm doing a candle run, what special occasions are these candles going to grace somewhere around the world? What special occasions are going to be graced by the candles that I have created? I love this vocabulary, special, exquisite, grace. Mm -hmm. One more word that stuck out for me was elaboration. This word that you're using to describe the physical process that happens within the bee colony that is mm -hmm. related to the transformation of honey to beeswax. And I've never heard that word used before. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I, That's used uh, commonly in beekeeping conversation. The change of nectar to honey and then the change of honey back to beeswax is called elaboration. Well, you know, because I haven't heard that word, I'm wondering if that's falling away from the vocabulary, if it's an older word that younger beekeepers are not using anymore. Unless they've talked to me, they probably aren't. <laughs> well, Tom, I talk to you all the time. We talk all the time. And well, I still, here you go. You've talked to me long enough word. that you've heard the word elaboration. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now you know. Now I know. Thank you for listening to Notes from the Bee Yard. We publish new episodes on Fridays at noon. Join us next week for episode 17, The Trap is Set. If you've enjoyed this episode, if you're enjoying the podcast... And if there's someone else out there who you think would also enjoy, hop on over to notesfromthebr.buzz, grab the link, and share.